René, good to have you here. Absolutely. Speaking a little, bit, a little bit about what's happening in France and with uh, Derek Prince Ministries in France. And uh, you've been there a while now, haven't you? Uh, actually, yes. Yeah, as well. Uh, my wife and I, we've been missionaries in France since uh, July 1992. So right. it's more than 20, today, 20, more years. Than 20 years. And we began to do something with Derek Prince in 1994. Okay. And you said you're missionaries. Where, where do you come from then? Well, I'm Dutch. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife is English, but she moved to Holland when she was 17 years old. So when I met her in Holland, she already been there for about 11 years. So, right. Yeah. So you've been working in France with Derek Prince Ministries since 1994, you said. Yeah. And uh, you've done a few books in your time there, translated oh, yeah. and printed. Just to, um, to give a little bit more detail, I wrote my first letter to Derek Prince in 1994. Oh, yeah. But we only began working with DPM in 1995, about a year later. So, okay. yeah. And in the meantime, I just looked it up uh, recently. Uh, we've done more than 100 titles in French, book titles. That's amazing. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, a lot of translation work behind oh, yeah. all of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of translation, correction, proofreading. Yes. Oh, yeah. And do you have a team that helps you with this? Um, yeah. Um, most of the proofreading I'm doing myself. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm not translating since I'm not a native French speaker, although I yes. do speak French fluently, obviously, because I'm working in France. But we do have a couple of people translating uh, mostly for free, although uh, we did pay some people for translation as well. But most of the translation work actually is done for free. Good. And in France, do you find that there's a great hunger for God? Do you find it a difficult climate to be working in? Um, yeah, it is a difficult climate to be working in. It is. Um, although France is a Western European country, uh, I think they're, well, they're not on the fifth place anymore uh, as an economic power, but still up there. Uh, mm -hmm. And it originally, obviously, is a Christian country. It doesn't. It isn't. You know, it's uh, what they say is that about 0.4% of the population is what they call born again. Uh, right. And well, having worked in France now amongst basically all the denominations for 20 years, I do know that uh, from those 0.4%, I guess that about half of those would be what we would call charismatic Christians. So that leaves us with only 0.2% of the population that is uh, possibly open for their French ministries. And what is the French population roughly? It's about 60 million. Okay. Yeah. So it's not a lot of Christians. That's not a lot of Christians with. to be working with. But no, a, no. a good opportunity to make a difference. Yeah. I must say, obviously, there's also a French-speaking population outside of France. You know, there's mm -hmm. the s southern part of Belgium, uh, there is the western part of Switzerland, and there's Quebec. But again, those Christian populations are very, very small. And then there's about 20 nations outside of France and Europe uh, in Africa, and also Haiti. Uh, mm -hmm. which the French is their main or her second main language. Uh, but that's a totally different situation because obviously they don't have the money to buy, so we usually send them either free of charge or with a huge discount. Right. And um, with these nations outside which speak French, those are mostly ex-French colonies, presumably? Um, yeah, or Belgian. Yeah. Belgian colonies. Yeah. And what do you find the, the biggest challenges working as a Christian organization in France? Um, one of the, in France, one of the biggest challenges would be that um, France being as it is, um, they just don't like interference from other cultures and other languages. You know, when we began to work in France like 20 years ago, English was something that was kind of foreign. Mm -hmm. you know, now things are different. My guess is basically because of the internet, because the main yes. language on the internet still is English and probably will ever be English. So, and English is taught now a lot more on schools and, and, and even music and television and everything. But it, it was very, very difficult. And foreign ministries, especially American ministries, were looked upon with great suspicion. Yes. And basically anything English was 
thought to be American. You know, many, many people thought that Derek Prince was American. You know, yes. Uh, until I told them otherwise. Mm. So, uh, so my biggest challenge was always to present the ministry in such a way uh, as a missionary should do. That's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. That a missionary should adapt to the culture where it's living in. He becomes yeah. Jew with the Jews, Greek with the Greeks, French with the French. So when I'm communicating with the French, I always go through my secretary and saying, listen, this is what I've written. Does it connect to you being French? Yeah. Or am I condescending or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and when she gives me the feu vert, the green light, <laughs> and then I go ahead. Good. So you, you work with, you have a French secretary and, and she helps you with your work in yeah. France. And um, in terms of the, the specific needs of the French office in light of the challenges that you've, you've shared with us, mm -hmm. um, what, what would you feel that the needs are for prayer and um, for fundraising? Um, it's, it's twofold, uh, fundraising and prayer, yeah. Fundraising because in all the, the years of our existence, um, although God has always faithfully provided, praise his name, uh, we've never had an opportunity to have like a situation with some reserves. We always yeah. needed to work on the edge, always. You know, just enough to pay our bills, just enough to pay whatever we needed to pay, and then there was nothing left. Yeah. So uh, the Lord is faithful. We do have donations, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm always I'm thankful for every 10 or 20 euros that people send. And what I'm very faith, uh, grateful about is that a lot of people, I just notice it, you know, have been on our mailing list for like 15 years and they've been giving for 15 years, you know, so yes. that is wonderful. But uh, sometimes I get a little jealous when I hear other offices, uh, you know, reporting about huge donations and big checks that are coming in and, mm -hmm. you know, legacies and everything, and which is wonderful, praise the Lord, but that just never happens in our place. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. So that, that would be one need. The second is um, prayer for refreshment and encouragement, yes. because working in France is, is very difficult, uh, mm -hmm. again, you know, the, the, the few Christians that are, are there, physically uh, present, the few churches, uh, the, the com well, not a complete, but the huge lack of life mm -hmm. and fruit. And I, I was just recently just reminiscing that in all the 20 years that we've been in France, I cannot recall having seen one person coming to Christ getting baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, and actually becoming a disciple of Christ throughout the years, let alone going into a ministry. You know? Wow. So, <laughs> Quite remarkable, isn't it? It is. Yeah, well, all, I must say, I'm not an evangelist, so it's not yes. my, my ministry to, you know, you know, disciple, uh, well, to disciple people, yes, but to get people to Christ, etc. But since a couple of years now, I'm an elder in the local church as well. And, you know, okay, people come to Christ, you baptize them, and then they're gone. You know, yes. and you just don't see them anymore. And that has been structurally always the case, basically. So I don't see the church growing in France, you know. Right. Uh, and that is quite discouraging. That is quite discouraging. So we always have, you always have to work mm -hmm. and always ask, where do I do it for? Where do I do it for? You know, mm -hmm. what's the fruit? You know, and just working in faith, basically. Yes. <laughs> Sowing those seeds, believing that it's, one day there will be a great harvest. And even if there isn't a harvest, then, okay, Lord, then I'm just doing it for you. Yes. If you were to sum up your vision for DPM's work in France, how would you do that? Um, well, my real, my heart is to build the church. That's my calling. You know, mm -hmm. when, when, we, when we came to France, uh, it was only three and a half years later that the Lord gave us DPM and my yes. call was to help the church, to help to build the church in France. Right. That was my call and that still is my call. Mm -hmm. And DPM has been the major uh, uh, tool in the hands of the Lord to do that, you know, outside other stuff as well. Um, so that is still my vision, that is still my dream, to see mature Christians who are able to serve the Lord, to walk in the purposes that God has for them, you know, that are responsible Christians, you know, uh, that yes. know how to pray, that know how to just live a victorious life. Yes. You know? 
that's my dream. That's what I'm working for. Well, may God strengthen you as you seek to serve the church and build His kingdom there. Thank you. Bless you.